But time to shift gears and chat macros. Radhika Rao, India economist at DBS now joins in on the show to chat a little bit more about the outlook on the same. Radhika, hi there, good afternoon and welcome to the show. To begin with, let's talk about that export data which saw quite a bit of a slump after quite a few months on Friday. How are you reading into this? Would you attribute it to certain, you know, uh, cyclical factors or do you think that this is sort of a trend that's here to stay? Hi, good afternoon. Uh, I think there are a couple of things, uh, you know, exports generally have not been able to participate, uh, I, I think, uh, uh, in this entire fiscal year. If, while you've seen most of, most of North, East, uh, North Asia uh, do fairly well in terms of the export growth, we have not been able to capitalize on that. Uh, and I think, uh, uh, as has been discussed quite quite often, uh, it's a combination of you know domestic uh, hindrances in terms of, uh, of what we face, GST implementation, uh, delay in uh, tax refunds, which held back our um, export growth, as well as you had a currency which was appreciating quite strongly up until late 2017. Uh, I think added to this mix was uh, also labor intensive industries, particularly that were not doing as well. Uh, so I think uh, it was a combination um, of factors that uh, has see exports growth uh, not do too well last year. I think going into FI19, the storyline might be pretty similar. Uh, and it comes at a time when your import growth uh, is actually much faster, leading to a deterioration in the trade deficit overall. Um, I think if you were to compare the nominal uh, GDP, uh, nominal uh, uh, you know exports uh, quantum uh, this year uh, as compared to... I just wanted to, to say that the WPI number is out. It's coming at 2.47% versus 2.5%, absolutely in line with estimates. Your first reaction was expected to be this, no real surprise? Um, yeah, we have, our expectations were a bit lower, but uh, obviously after the CPI numbers came out as well, it is pretty clear that uh, inflation, the, the uh, expectations at March will be much lower, uh, has not panned out in the sense that yes, it's softer, but not by much, mainly because now the pressure is coming in uh, on the WPI. I think the pressure is coming in from the input uh, prices. Uh, you know, if you were to, uh, RBI divides it into farm inputs as well as industrial uh, raw materials. Both these are showing signs of life uh, because of pass through from international uh, prices. And you've seen CPI where the demand side pressures are also quite apparent. Uh, so yes, I think uh, inflation uh, downswing is, has not been as sharp and that's why you're now seeing inflation beginning to pick up. Uh, and I think in the June quarter, in the WPI as well as the CPI, we're going to see uh, much firmer numbers. Right. Uh, you know, we just get breakup of it as uh, well. But before that, you know, there has also been a development regarding the currency, which has taken the currency also to a high today. Can you just talk to us about what US has done to Indian rupee and how, how does it impact? Uh, sure, I think uh, uh, the uh, India has been named uh, in the monitoring list, right? So you've got uh, six countries and all that I routinely seen every six. Uh, in, back in the October uh, report of the US Treasury, what they had done is they had placed India on, on a watch in terms of uh, uh, there are three categories under which the US Treasury marks economies which they think might be manipulating the currency and uh, India figured in that uh, monitoring list in, the, in their April review. Uh, so what they had said, the main uh, uh, you know thorn on their side was that uh, FX reserves had written, risen by a fair bit uh, and FX purchases by the regulator uh, had increased to more than 2% of GDP, uh, which, which does not bode well, which shows essentially that uh, there was some kind of uh, currency impact. But I, I don't think, uh, I think if we compare India as against all the other currency countries, that are on the monitoring list, uh, I don't think uh, there's a risk that India might be called a, a manipulator uh, anytime soon, precisely because we don't fulfill all the three categories. Uh, and this year's tone has been much more bearish on the rupee as compared to last year. Uh, so I don't think that uh, the shift in, in talk about FX purchases increasing here on uh, is going to be much at play this year. Radhika, let's just walk you through the breakup of the numbers that we have with us at hand. Fuel and power inflation has come in a pinch higher at 4.7% versus 3.8% last month. The manufactured products inflation, you could pretty much say unchanged, 3.03 versus 3.04%. While the food article inflation has come in at a negative 0.29 versus a 0.88%. I want you to specifically give us your views on what you know you make of this trend for the food article inflation and more importantly the reasons that you would attribute it and where it's headed. Sure, so uh, food inflation, uh, you know, seasonally, if we were to see usually the first quarter 
um, first quarter of a calendar year and last quarter of a fiscal year uh, routinely uh, is seasonally weak to mean that food prices generally uh, soften in this time and then pre-monsoon you will again see a, a increase uh, because of shortage of supplies and hence forth. So I think that's what is playing out uh, again in the CPI as well as the WPI. Uh, but I think more importantly, we, have, we are also equally affected by base effects. Same time last year, uh, demonetization and after effects were playing out uh, in, for growth as well as inflation. And uh, I think that will be another factor why in the June quarter we would see seasonality uh, as well as uh, these base adverse base effects uh, keep uh, inflation at elevated levels. So food prices likely to come back and at the same time, like I shared earlier, your input prices are also showing pressure. I think we can look at various uh, avenues for that. You can also look at the PMI sub indices. Even there, there are signs of input as well as output prices going up. In WPI, you've seen manufacturing WPI, core WPI being nearly stagnant and rising gradually. Uh, so there are enough uh, evidence to, to suggest that, yes, um, inflation is overall in terms of target you know, it's benign, but it's bottomed out and it's likely to edge high. And the June quarter, particularly, we will see most price indices firm up uh, because of uh, base effects. Right. Uh, Radhika, just request you to stay on. Mathli Ma'am is also now joining us. Just uh, for the benefit of our viewers, let's read the numbers once again. WPI inflation has come in at 2.47%. The poll was 2.5, so it's broadly in line, two basis points here and there. The Jan WPI number has been revised to 3.02%, beg your pardon, not 3.2. 3.02% versus 2.84%. That was the provisional numbers. The primary article inflation is uh, about 0.24%, and the fuel inflation came in at 4.8%. Manufacturing was about 3%, slightly lower versus the month of Feb. And the food article inflation was on the negative side. But I think the street already got a sense about this which uh, from the CPI uh, numbers as well. And the overall commodity index inflation of primary R uh, was up around 0.2%. Methli ma'am, first your take on WPI. We also have Radhika with us if you want uh, to ask any internals uh, to her. Oh, well, yes, these numbers are definitely in line. Yes, as I said, these numbers are definitely in line with what we saw on when we got the consumer price index inflation numbers. And these have largely become of academic interest ever since the RBI shifted to inflation targeting based on consumer price inflation. But to the extent that the WPI has a much larger weightage of manufactured articles, it would indicate pricing power returning to manufacturers. And as of now, we don't see any indication of that. Of course, there are signs that demand is picking up and that the capacity utilization is inching up. If that happens, we should see manufacturing inflation move up. But as of now, the numbers for March are certainly quite uh, actually satisfying, no need for worry. But almost everybody in the market is unanimous that the RBI's projections for inflation going forward seem to be gross underestimates given the fact that there are looming risks ahead in terms of higher fiscal deficit, higher MSP, higher rate hikes by the US Fed and of course oil price rising. So as of now nothing to worry about inflation but since all central banks need to be forward looking I would say no time for complacency either. Right. Um, would you tend to concur with that view, Radhika? What's your outlook? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. I was... Okay, I was actually posing a question mentally to Radhika, but I believe she isn't with us at the moment. Uh, would ra like to get an <coughs> your outlook on the food inflation number. You know, the food article inflation has come in or contracted, would you say, at minus 0.29% versus 0.88%. How are you looking at this reading and mentally? Is this some sort of an indication of how the trend is likely to shape up for the food article inflation? Because even the food article index is down 0.4%. I'm assuming this is addressed to me because I know I can only get your voice in patches. So I'm assuming that this is addressed to me and you're asking me about the low food inflation. Yes, at the winter months normally give you food inflation coming in at a lower level. But as the summer months come, we get the dislocation first on account of the tightening supplies, particularly of fruits and vegetables in the early summer months. And then we have the disruption caused because of monsoon. Because remember in India, even if we get a satisfactory monsoon, the spatial and the timely distribution of that monsoon is also very critical. So the summer months always see a rise in food inflation. Of course, to the extent that food contributes a very small part of the WPI basket, it doesn't have that much of an impact on the WPI. It has a much larger impact on the CPI. So every year, do we do see food inflation go up? 
This year, of course, we have the added uncertainty because the MSP. We have already seen government announce a much higher MSP for millet. And we don't know whether this is going to be the policy for a number of other crops, as the government has promised in the budget. So with that, it is going to be an increase in food inflation also. And with oil prices rising, etc., and all the other reasons that I listed earlier, certainly inflation in the coming months is going to look up rather than down. Right. Uh, Methli, ma'am, also just wanted to talk to you about the trade deficit numbers which came out. Uh, say if crude prices continue to be where they are, the trade deficit number, the export numbers that came in uh, seem to be worrying? Uh, on the issue of crude prices, yes, again, there's a great deal of uncertainty because we now have the political uncertainty and the tensions in Syria with the Western allies really deciding to give it back to Syria because of the use of chemical weapons. So all this hikes the uncertainty in the Middle East and an area which is always very fragile to begin with. And we haven't seen shale oil supplies increasing so dramatically. And remember, the oil producing countries will be quite happy at 70 plus. And that is not good news for India once again, because apart from inflation and what it does to the fiscal deficit, there also is a huge political question before the government. What does it do? Does it reduce the taxes, which again with implications on the fiscal deficit? Does it allow prices to rise, again with impact on inflation? And also with voting, you know, the, the voters' angst and the anger that the voters will display if oil prices were to go up dramatically. So oil prices going up or staying at 70 plus is never very happy for India. And how are you looking at the overall export figure that came in on Friday, uh, Methli? Do you believe that it's a bit disconcerting uh, given the fact that you did see quite a bit of a drop and particularly from gems and jewellery which fell about 16%? Uh, again, Avan, your voice is not clear at all. I assume that you're asking me about the trade deficit. Yes, the trade deficit numbers are not very happy at all, particularly because export showed a contraction. And at a time when we're seeing increasing protectionist pressures all over the world, if we see exports contract, that's not good news for India. Remember also, this means that any hope that we might get for GDP growth, any support that we might get for higher GDP growth through better performance on the export front, also gets completely all those hopes get scotched. Also, there is the fact that the current account deficit will once again inch towards 2%. And anything over the 2% is very bad news for India. We've seen what vulnerabilities on the external front do to India's macro fundamentals. And so there again, I think we do need to watch what's happening on the export front. Hopefully, the slight, very slight weakening of the rupee that we're seeing would be good news for India. But ironically, we've seen the US dollar also weaken. So what this means vis-a-vis -vis relative strength of the Indian currency vis-a-vis -vis our competitors remains to be seen. But overall, the fact that our export sector is not very competitive, it is extraordinarily difficult to do business in India despite the improvement in our ease of doing business ranking means that the export front cannot offer us much sucker. And that again is not good news. So from a time when our macro fundamentals looked very good, we are moving to other time when macro fundamentals once again look very iffy. Right, uh, Methli, ma'am. Thank you so much for taking our time for us. Always good.